Welcome to a little summary video on nomenclature. Fancy way to say names. And really, we're doing names to formulas, formulas to names. So you guys have been completing this packet um, about all these different categories of how to name some compounds and how to name others and how to write formulas and that kind of thing. So I want to make sure that you guys are all on the same page now that we're getting closer to the end of the packet that you understand what is kind of at stake. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to take a look at if you have a formula and you want to write the name. Now one of the things that you're asked to do is to make a flow chart that basically describes how to do this. And if you haven't yet done that, you should do that before you watch this video. Don't worry, there's a little stop button. You can stop it, you can do that, you can come back after you've already thought this through. Um, but if you're struggling with it, then this is gonna be a good place for you. But you should not be recreating my flowchart. You should make your own. So here's the idea. If you are given a formula for something, what I want you to do, in the, the very first thing that you kind of need to find out is what elements are in it. And the reason that's important is because there's really three main categories of things that you need to look for in terms of how to write the name. So either it's a metal with a non-metal, that didn't write correctly, <laughs> or it has one of those polyatomic ions in it that you memorized, because that's going, going to be in the same kind of category, or it's all non-metals. Those are our two categories to look at. So we're going to start with the metal and non-metal, or it has a polyatomic ion in it. So if that's the case, really, really important, these guys have no prefixes. So there will not be any of those prefixes from Table 5.3 that you're going to memorize in this grouping. So what you have to, if you're going to write if you're given the formula and you're going to write the name, so for example, uh, CuF2 is an example here. It's a metal and it's a nonmetal. Um, another example might be NH4Cl, polyatomic ion and a nonmetal, or something like MgSO4, metal, polyatomic ion. Those would all fall under this first category here. So none of them are going to get any prefixes. So what do, what do we have to look at? We have to ask ourselves, is there a transition metal? from the periodic table? Because as you know, if there is a transition metal, if the answer is yes, then we need to include a Roman numeral in the name. If the answer is no, then there's no Roman numeral. Roman number, how about that? So just taking a look at some of the examples we have, um, let's take a look at this first one here. CuF2, okay, metal, nonmetal. Is there a transition metal? Yes, there is a transition metal. This copper is in the transition metal part of your periodic table. That means I need a Roman numeral with it. So if I need a Roman numeral, then I'm going to write the metal first, literally just the name of the metal, then a Roman numeral to indicate its charge, and then I'm gonna write the, in this case, the non-metal name, but it's going to change the ending to IBE. Now, if this was instead of copper, now how do we know what that Roman numeral is? That's a good question here. So this, fluorine, I look off the periodic table, it's in the minus one column. So fluorine is minus one, there's two of them, so the whole thing is minus two. That means the charge on copper has to be plus two. So for this example, it's going to become copper charge is plus two, and then the non-metal change the ending to IDAE, non-copper two fluoride. If there was a polyatomic ion, let's say it was CuNO3, um, 
I do not change the ending on a polyatomic ion. This polyatomic ion is negative one, which means the charge on copper is plus one, and so this becomes copper one, and now I don't change the ending because it's polyatomic ion, nitrate. I just leave the ending as is. So this becomes copper one nitrate, okay? So that's what you do if there's a Roman numeral. If there's no Roman numeral, it's actually even simpler because we don't need to figure out the charge. So there's no Roman numeral, and so you simply are going to write the name of the metal, and then the name of the nonmetal. I can't write right now, sorry. <laughs> and change the ending to IDE. There's no need for a Roman numeral. Um, polyatomic ion names don't change. So we don't change the ending on those. So take a look at, we're going to scroll back up to an example I had. So here's one. Oh, but here's a problem. The polyatomic ion is a positive ion whose name is ammonium. We don't change that, so we're going to write that first. And then this is chlorine, who's negative one. We don't need to know those charges here to name it, but it becomes ammonium chloride for this one. We don't change the name of the polyatomic ion. And we don't need a charge, so it's just ammonium chloride. That's two words, even though it looks like one. Um, here's another example. Here's magnesium. Don't change that. And this is sulfate. So it's magnesium sulfate. If it was just MgCl2, that would be magnesium chloride. We would just change the ending. So this, sorry, this is a mess, <laughs> is magnesium chloride. Again, don't need a Roman numeral for that. So we do have to pay attention to if there's a transition metal, and honestly, people forget to do that all the time. All right, back to the other. If the elements are all nonmetals, there's two possibilities. Now I'm going to just scroll this down here. If they're all nonmetals, there's two things that you need to look for. It could be um, an acid, in which case you recognize it because it starts with H, ends with something, and typically has a Q, or it's not an acid. The key thing here is that if it's a not if it's all nonmetals and it's not an acid, how do I know? Because it doesn't start with H and end with a Q, that these, when we write the names, have to use prefixes. If it's an acid, we follow different rules, as I'm sure you discovered. So I'm just only going to do one example here. If I need to name this, I use a prefix to tell me how many phosphorus and how many oxygen, and then I change the ending to IDE. So this becomes diphosphorus 2, 5 is pent, pent, and I change the ending to IDE, so it becomes pent oxide. So this becomes diphosphorus pent oxide. You saw some examples in your packet, like if it's only one carbon, mono is the prefix for, mon, for one, but we don't call it monocarbon dioxide if there's one on the first element. So in the case of, in your packet you saw this, carbon monoxide, we do use the prefix on the second, we don't use it on the first. All right, acids. So you saw some examples, something like HCl or say HClO2, or I'm going to use these. These were in your packet here. Three possibilities when you have an acid and you're trying to write the name. Um, there are some that contain no oxygen in them, like HCl. There are some that contain a polyatomic ion that starts, that ends in ite. This, by the way, is chlorite. There are some that contain a polyatomic ion that ends in eight. That's what you want to look for in here. If it has no oxygen, it starts with hydro, then something ick, acid. 
So in this case, hydrochlor for chlorine, change the ending to ic, acid. These have no hydro in them. As soon as you have an oxygen in it, there's no hydro. And so now it ends in either ic or us. Um, for the ite, this is chlorite, you change the ending to O-U-S. And so instead of being chlorite, it becomes chlor us acid. If the ending is eight, like in chlorate, we use the ending ic, and this becomes chloric acid. You might think of this to help you. I might have ate something icky. Take it or leave it, folks. I don't know. <laughs> if it helps, great. If it doesn't, move on. All right, so those are some, if you have a formula and you need to write the names. Now, if you have, going the other direction, if you have the name and you have to write the formula, we have to consider those same things. I'm going to go in my reverse order here. So if you have an acid, so you recognize it because you have something like hydro... Um, sulfuric acid versus um, sulfuric acid or sulfurous acid. Same things. As soon as you see hydro, that means there's no oxygen. That means there's a hydrogen, because they all have hydrogen and just plain old sulfur. But, like in many of these, you have to make sure it's neutral. Yikes, I only have two hours remaining. Um, you need to make sure it's neutral. So I have to look up, what's the charge on sulfur? Oh, it's minus two, and hydrogen is plus two. Therefore, I need two of these. So it becomes H2S, and because it's an acid, it's AQ. Sulfuric acid. Oh, there's no hydro, so there must be an oxygen. It ends in ick. So that means it must come from sulfate. Sulfate is SO4 2 minus. Hydrogen is plus one. So I need two of these guys. So it becomes H2 SO4 AQ. Sulfurous acid, OUS, that tells me it's sulfite. Sulfite is SO3 2 minus. Yes, I have these memorized. The question is, do you? I need two of these plus one hydrogens, and so it becomes H2SO3AQ. All right, I'm moving backwards from the direction I went before. All right, what if your name contains prefixes? Because remember, we went from acids and we also went to prefixes. Prefixes make your life super easy. As soon as you see prefixes, you're like, yes, I don't have to even think much. So if I get something like dinitrogen, tetraoxide, or it might be written tetroxide, depends on the source. It may drop that A. This makes your life super easy, because why? I have two nitrogens and four oxygens, so I just write N2O4 in the order it's given. They make your life so easy. You hope you get tons of those. You won't. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Last one then, oh, is back to the metal, non-metal, polyatomic ions. And so these are the kind of metal, non-metal, polyatomic ion group. A couple of these that you could encounter. So again, if you're given, I do not have a periodic table in front of me, of course, so I'm making these up on the fly. Um, Let's say you're given calcium hydroxide, or maybe you are given, I'm trying to find it, oh, there's, there's preactible. Um, I'll just use the example like I used before. Maybe you're given uh, copper 2 fluoride, or maybe you're given magnesium. sulfide. These are just some examples. Um, they don't have prefixes, so as soon as they don't have prefixes, I know that I'm going to have to deal with the charges to figure out what the formula is. That's the key. 
no prefixes, deal with the charges. So calcium, I know calcium is plus two. I look it on the periodic table and I find that. Hydroxide, hydroxide I've memorized is OH minus one. Well, I need these charges to be equal and opposite, so I'm gonna need two of these. So when I write the formula, it becomes CA, and I need parentheses here because I need two of them, OH2. Do not leave these charges in your formula. This becomes the formula. Copper 2 fluoride. Copper, here's where these Roman numerals are handy because this tells me the charge of copper. So this is copper plus two. And fluorine. Now I have to look fluorine off the periodic table and it is negative one. So I need two of these guys. Sorry, I just happened to use two examples that are like that. Um, and so it becomes CuF2. I don't need parentheses because it's not a polyatomic ion. The parentheses are because I have two of this entire group. So this becomes CuF2. Last one, magnesium sulfate. Sulfide, apologies. Um, I look off periodic table, magnesium is plus two. Sulfur, I look off periodic table, minus two. Oh, look, they're already good, and so I need one of each, MGS. So, what I'm trying to show you are different ways. If you have the name, what to do to get the formula. If you have the formula, what to do to get to the name. That will be your quiz. There are 25 questions on Friday. Half-ish, 12 of one, 13 of the other. I'll, you will literally get the name and have to write the formula. The other half, you will get the formula and have to write the name. That's it, that's the whole quiz and you have limited time to do that, so you need to have your things memorized, like your polyatomic ions, don't forget, your prefixes, and don't forget in table 5.3, it only goes up to eight, but you should know nine is nona, and 10 is deca, in addition to the ones in table 5.3. You should have table 5.4 memorized, which means you should already have your flashcards done and memorize. Do not try to do that the night before the quiz. All right, good luck.